Hello everybody, welcome back to Mega Projects. I can't believe that the title of this one is actually Satan 2. That's amazing. Also amazing, today's video sponsor Keeps. Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Join the club, guys! Or don't, or don't with Keeps. I wish Keeps had been around when I was younger because advancements in science have meant that there are now treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair that you have. Look, it's too late for me. My hair's not coming back. But you don't have to be like me. You can stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved drugs for treating hair loss, so you might have tried them before, or maybe you haven't. But you've never tried them at a price this low. That's right, if you were thinking the shit's gonna be mad expensive, Simon, it's medicine and I live in America. Well, you couldn't be more wrong as Keep starts at just $10 a month. Less than Netflix? How much is Netflix? That's cheap. How does it work? Well, for one thing, there's no need to visit a doctor's office. Just schedule a quick online consult and a bit later, discreet package gonna arrive at your door and you can use it in the privacy of your own home. Go to keeps.com forward slash mega projects or click the link in the description below. You'll get 50% off your first order. That's a limited time deal. Link below. Let's get into the video. Satan 2. If there was one thing that the world really could do without these days, it's a sequel to the arms race. But if you look at the monsters that are reported to be appearing out of the Soviet Union, I'm sorry, sorry, Russia recently, you'd be forgiven for thinking that we'd somehow travel back to the early 1960s. When Russian President Vladimir Putin took the stage at the Federal Assembly in Russia in 2018, he announced to the world that his nation had developed a new superweapon that he referred to as invincible. Brilliant. A hypersonic, intercontinental ballistic missile capable of evading traditional detection systems and hitting any location on the planet with next to no warning. An example attack played out through animated video at the Federal Assembly even showed a hypothetical strike on the old enemy, the United States. What are you up to, Russia? That is some scary sh**. The RS-28 Sarmat is a liquid-fueled, multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle equipped with a super-heavy intercontinental ballistic missile. Oh my god, that is a massive mouthful. I can see why it's just nicknamed Satan too, right? In more simplistic terms, it's an enormous missile which eventually splits up to reveal numerous smaller warheads inside. It's a nuclear Russian nesting doll if you will. NATO has given it the reporting name Satan 2, the sequel to its younger brother, Satan, known in Russia as the R-36M, a fearsome goliath in itself. Although honestly, I wouldn't put it beyond Russia calling it like Satan. <laughs> there seems to be a little confusion over whether or not the Satan 2 has actually become fully operational or it's simply in the final stages, but either way, the next generation of Russian nuclear might is just around the corner. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail over the first arms race because we've done an entire video on Mega Projects already about it, so you can watch that after you've watched this one. But let's just say that it was a fairly nerve jangling time in which the two superpowers built up a stockpile of so many nuclear weapons that they'd never have any hope of using them all. Apart from a few rare occasions, these two superpowers thankfully never came anywhere close to fighting each other. Instead, they both sat on top of their respective nuclear warhead mountain, playing proxy in various bitter conflicts around the world and slinging mud at each other until the USSR eventually collapsed in 1991. While this signaled the end of the Cold War, in truth it had become much more of a mildly chilly war for a good time. The series of arms treaties during the 1980s has seen both sides begin to reduce their nuclear arsenals, which principally involved getting rid of the worst and oldest weapons while keeping the best ones and the most destructive. When you actually look at how many nuclear warheads were left, the START treaties weren't exactly groundbreaking as they still left plenty in the tank to blow the world apart many, many times over, but it was certainly a bit of a start. Another topic that we're not going to spend a lot of time on today is the collapse of the Soviet Union, because guess what? We've done a whole Mega Projects video about that too. We really cover everything. How, how is that even a Mega Project? I don't even know what this channel's about anymore. <laughs>
But we do need to touch on it quickly because it does lead to what we're talking about today. After the USSR finally splintered apart, Russia was left in a dicey situation. Suddenly, the bluster was well and truly gone, and the country faced significant economic problems. The road from communism to capitalism and a market economy for the largest country on the planet was fraught with difficulties, and at time, Russia faced real economic collapse. Goods began disappearing from shelves, the GDP dropped by a sixth in 1991 alone, and the Russian government resorted to printing money just to keep up. The 1990s were a bleak period, but if you can say one thing about the Russians, it's that they were a ferociously hardy bunch, and slowly the nation began to pick itself up. Now all they needed was an uber-manly commander-in-chief who'd ride in, bare-chested on horseback, of course, to restore the glories of the Soviet I mean, Russia. I meant Russia. My bad. When Vladimir Putin took office in 1999, Russia was already emerging from its economic malaise, but the ex-KGB man gave the nation an extra shot in the arm. Sports doping pun not intended, but well, thoroughly enjoyed. There was never really any doubt about Putin's desire to re-establish Russia on the global stage, and by that I mean a menacing return of the old Soviet Union style of doing things. Russian Tu-95 bombers began their patrols once again, which typically took them into NATO airspace, requiring jets to scramble and chase them away. Over the last decade, Russia has made a lot of headlines. There was their otherworldly success at the Sochi Olympics in 2014, and I think we now all know why. The annexation of Crimea, the support for Ukrainian separatists, and the Assad regime in Syria, the election meddling, misinformation programs, and so on, and so on, and so on. Russia has been throwing its weight around like it was 1962 for some time now, and this has included a steady military buildup and the return of the dark spectre of nuclear weapons. Now, of course, nuclear weapons never went away. Since the 1960s, there's been plenty of nukes just lying around. And while the fall of the USSR may have slowed things down for a while as Russia stepped away from the top table temporarily, the country always maintained a hefty number of civilization-ending devices. Hypersonic missiles are quickly becoming all the rage, and a few nations are currently battling it out to be top dog. Russia, the United States, and China. No shocks there. Traveling at at least five times the speed of sound, and likely much more, harder to detect and intercept, and with a massive punch capable of burrowing down deep into even the most seriously reinforced building or aircraft carrier, hypersonic missiles certainly sound like something we should be worrying about. The next generation Russian destroyer has been under development at Maki of Rocket Design Bureau since 2009, and it's broadly slated to replace the Cold War era R-36 missile. The fact that work began a year after the election of President Obama, which saw US relations with Russia take a tumble, might be pure coincidence, but it also might not be. It was first formally mentioned by military officials in 2014 with a projected 2020 deployment. Information was fairly scant over the next four years, with only patchy clues concerning the development of this new weapon. We believe the first stage engine, named PDU-99, a modified version of the RD-274 liquid rocket engine, was tested in August 2016, with an official image of the missile appearing in October the same year. The first successful ejection test of the missile occurred toward the end of 2017, and on March the 1st, 2018, Putin stood before the Federal Assembly to give his annual address, where he explained to the world just how Russia could theoretically destroy Florida with the use of a Satan II through a terrifying demonstration on a screen. Why did you do this? It's so weird. The video that accompanied Putin's dark sermon showed what looks like a successful launch of the Satan II, then it cuts to a computer animation of the missile zigging and zagging between mountains and around American missile defense systems before breaking into several different warheads above the Sunshine State. It's not exactly clear why Florida was the target. I mean, I think we could probably all think of a few reasons. Florida's a bit weird, but I mean, that's really beside the point. What are you doing simulating nuking Russia, Putin? The entire show was a bit bizarre, to say the least. The animation looked like it might have been made by a 14-year-old for a school project, and the gushing response from Putin's chums in the audience to a hypothetical nuclear attack on another country probably says a lot about his friends. 
and him, if we're being frank. But still, the video was played extensively on TV around the world, which of course freaked people out, with many a hysterical commentator declaring that the United States needed to up its game in the face of such an appalling threat. Others were significantly more restrained, and I dare say less reliant on clickbait. Although, here we are in a video titled Satan 2. <laughs> Ex-Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice described this particular nuclear menace as an empty threat, while many poured cold water on the entire show, saying it was little more than propaganda fear-mongering. Putin had effectively told the world that Russia now had a missile capable of carrying nuclear weapons undetected and unopposed to any corner of the globe at speeds of 25,560 kilometers an hour, or about 16,000 miles per hour. If this was entirely true, surely most NATO countries would be quaking in their boots right now, but as far as we know, this hasn't really been the case. No one listened to us, Putin said during his speech. Listen to us now, he added. I don't know about you, but that sounds more like a petulant child looking for attention rather than a grand unveiling of a weapon that would bring the entire world to heel. Yes, I did the, we're not at heel, are we? Yet? I mean, maybe we should be. It's kind of scary. Who knows? I should add that this particular speech didn't simply focus on Satan 2, but was one of six new weapons flaunted by the Russian leader, which included new cruise missiles and a new nuclear torpedo capable of crossing entire oceans. I'd also like to add that 2018 was an election year. And we know what happens in election years. I mean, what better way to convince voters that you're still the Russian strongman number one than dusting off an old war drum and pounding out the Cold War march once again? So, is Satan 2 worth all of the hype? Will it be coming to a cinema in Miami Beach anytime soon? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's put aside Putin's bluster and take a look at the missile itself. Satan 2's a big boy, hence the tag Super Heavy Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, a mouthful. And it comes out at a hefty 201 tons with a length of 35.5 meters and diameter of 3 meters. It's got an operational range of 18,000 kilometers, 11,000 miles, and top speed of Mach 21. Good lord! It's 20.7, but I round it up. Unlike traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles, which travel up and then down along a well-determined arc, the Satan II uses a much shallower trajectory, and the Russians claim that it can weave close to the ground and therefore evade Florida's much-touted missile defense system. Russian media has also reported that it can fly over either the North or South Pole, adding an extra degree of surprise when it lands in America. Or we can only assume that the Americans and their impressive missile defense system had never thought of this crazy possibility. Although, honestly, I get a feeling they have, because it's, I mean, it's a super fast missile. Missiles have been getting faster. Probably thought of it, right? At least thought of it. Someone's brought it up. As I mentioned at the start of this video, in what was an absolute mouthful that took about 17 takes, the Satan II is also a multiple, independently targetable re-entry vehicle, or MERV, meaning that once it gets near to its target, the missile breaks into 10 to 15 separate warheads, each capable of acting like an independent cruise missile, and each packing a 750 kiloton warhead. Alternatively, it could carry 24 YU-74 hypersonic boost glide vehicles, known as Avangard, guards, though these are reportedly still some way off from full operational use. In theory, a single Satan II could deploy a combined nuclear attack with the equivalent of 8 megatons of TNT, which is around 400 times more powerful than either of the bombs dropped on Japan at the end of the Second World War. Putin's claim that the Satan II is invincible is faintly plausible, in theory. We don't know enough about this weapon to get an accurate idea of how exactly the Satan II would be able to weave smoothly through the most sophisticated missile defense system on the planet, as it did in the animated video. The Russian claim that the missile can take an unpredictable route is about as clear as Putin's real net worth, and certainly <laughs> we are hard bashing on Putin. Ah! Oh my. It's entirely likely that several of the warheads aren't actually weapons at all, but rather countermeasures designed to fool anti-missile systems. Perhaps only five or six of the separate missiles would carry a warhead, and the rest are simply there to cover the scent. Another option might be that the Satan II comes with warhead cooling systems that can be used to confuse heat-seeking missile systems. Unfortunately, we just don't know. So we're just taking a guess. <laughs> Sometimes it's what we have to do.
The fever that erupted in the wake of Putin's announcement in 2018 was enough to convince many that we're barreling towards another arms race, which, to be honest, was probably exactly what the Russian leader was hoping for. What's clear is that toward the end of the Cold War, the emphasis was on the reduction of warheads and MIRVs. Both superpowers kept most of their nuclear weapons, but agreed to begin lowering the number of warheads. It now appears that we may be moving in the opposite direction again, with both countries, and potentially China as well, placing their faith in smaller intercontinental missiles capable of carrying more MIRVs at higher speeds. The age of the mighty Cold War armament may be over, but the sneaky speedsters of the 21st century could well pose a very different threat. Both Russia and the United States have vast stockpiles of nuclear weapons, most of which are now starting to look a little dated. So the idea of modernizing their arsenals isn't exactly radical. President Obama certainly made his feelings toward nuclear weapons perfectly clear when he spoke of his dream of a world without nuclear weapons, but his administration also instigated an upgrade program to US nuclear armaments that will probably cost at least a trillion dollars over the next three decades. It's difficult to say whether the arrival of the Satan II will spark another genuine arms race, or whether it's simply being used to score points and inflate Russian interests. The thing about leaders that stick around for a prolonged period is that they have to continuously justify their position to the people they govern. If Russia was on friendly terms with the rest of the world, Putin would have a much harder time convincing the Russian people that they need to waste billions of dollars every year on the military, rather than fixing some of the country's social issues. The Satan II is due to have its final testing phase over the next couple of years and should be deployed sometime in 2022. Whether or not we'll ever see this invincible wonder weapon is quite a different matter, but honestly, let's probably hope that we don't see anything like this from anyone. Now, I know we've lampooned Putin a bit in this video, but honestly, we've very little idea just how powerful and technologically advanced the Satan II is. This is Russia, after all, with a long pedigree of rolling out obscenely powerful weapons. So let's not count them out entirely. How much of this new missile is cutting edge and how much is simply a propaganda tool remains to be seen. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.